Okay, welcome back. Let's go on to uh, 7.1. So we're looking at area between curves. I'm looking for a pen as well. There's a pen. 7.1, area between two curves. Okay. Uh, so it's kind of essentially the donut hole problem. So if you have, if you know the area of a circle, and you know the area of this, the center part, and you subtract those two. you can find the area of the donut, right? That's essentially what we want to do here, just with um, functions and stuff. So the idea here we have uh, the, uh, the area underneath one curve, okay, so maybe from A to B. Then if we subtract away the area underneath this curve from A to B, what you end up with is the area between the two curves, right? So it's, just, it's the donut hole problem. Um, written symbolically then, uh, and usually you want maybe to think of it starting over here. Um, we could do it either way, I guess it doesn't matter. The integral of, let's call this one f, this one g, the integral of the area uh, under f from a to b minus the um, area under g from a to b is equal to the difference, basically f of x minus g of x dx from a to b. That, that's the, the main picture from this section, I guess. Um, okay. Okay, uh, another way to think of it, which may help, um, if I, and for instance, if I'm trying to find the area between these two curves, this is f, this is g, to find the area, it's going to, you always think of top curve minus bottom curve. So it's the integral of the top curve minus the bottom curve tells you the area in between the two curves. Okay, so um, let's just dive in here and see what we can see. Uh, have example one. So they're giving you the function y equals x squared plus 2, y equals negative x, x equals 0, and x equals 1. Okay. Um, usually drawing a picture of some sort is worth doing so you can identify what is on top and what is on bottom. Right? So x squared plus 2 is just a parabola shifted up two places. So 1, 2, that's right here. Um, the line y equals negative x is a diagonal through the origin. So it looks like that. The line x equals 0 is a vertical line through um, the y-axis, and then the line x equals 1 is a vertical line through the x-coordinate 1. And then uh, the area that we're trying to find will, at the end of the day, be this area here. Whoops, can we, yeah, that's right, that's right, okay. So the, um, 
to find that area, you are going to integrate from red line to red line, so from 0 to 1. And it will be the top curve, which is the x squared minus 2, minus the bottom curve, which is negative x, and then dx. And then we get a little practice uh, integrating. So this will be the integral of x squared minus 2 plus x dx. And that will be x cubed all over 3 plus x squared over 2 minus 2x from 0 to 1. I like to factor out so I only have to worry about um, integer values. So if you factor out a 1, 6, you end up with uh, 2x cubed plus 3x squared. You don't have to do this. This may be confusing. Hopefully it's not. Minus 12x. Okay. And then when you put in, uh, first put in 1 and then subtract away, this thing evaluated as 0. Well, you'll get 2 plus 3 minus 12. Um, sorry, this should be 2 plus 3. Jeez. It's x squared plus 2 back here. Oops, sorry about that. So this would be plus 2x plus 12. Um, minus this thing evaluated at 0, which would just be 0. And then that will be 1 6 times uh, 17. So 17 6. So top minus bottom is a point. The other issue is kind of when you have um, curves that intersect each other. And in those cases, the top and the bottom curve changes, right? So if this is um, f, let's call this g, in order to get the area, because we always want to do top curve minus bottom curve, we need to split this up into two integrals, the first integral um, g is on the top, so it would be g of x minus f of x dx. And that will go from intersection point to intersection point, whatever those are. So we'll say a to b, and then plus um, uh, b to c, where now the, the curve on top is f. So we'll have f of x minus g of x dx. So um, now, in these cases, there'll be two issues, uh, figuring out what's on top and what's on bottom. And then secondly, finding the intersection points. And finding the intersection points, you just solve a system of equations, or you set the equations equal to each other, if you would rather. Okay? So let's take a look at some of those. I entitle this section just finding the area between intersecting curves. So you have to find the intersection points for the bounds of the integrals. So uh, example two from the book, we have f of x equals 2 minus x squared, and then g of x equals plain old x. So we do a quick graph. Um, 2 minus x squared will flip the parabola around the x-axis, and then the 2 shifts it up place 2. So it looks something like that. And then this is the diagonal. So it looks something like this. Okay, so the area we're interested in is the area between these two curves. And already I kind of know what the integral is going to look like. It'll be the top curve, which is 2 minus x squared, minus the bottom curve, which is just x. Okay. So I need to still figure out these inter the, these points here, this and this, the intersection points. So to do that, I have a system of equations, basically y equals 2 minus x squared, and then y equals x. And I need to solve those. So usually what your teacher will say is set the equations equal to each other, and that's basically the substitution method for solving a system of equations. So I'll substitute x in for y, right? So here I go. I'll have x equals 2 minus x squared, and then solve for x. So you can add x squared to the other side, 
subtract 2 on the other side, and then we want to factor. And then we get our intersection points. x is negative 2, x is 1. And those become the bounds on our integrals. So we're going from negative 2 to 1. And then we just have some integration to do. So uh, simple enough. This will be 2x um, minus x cubed all over 3 minus x squared over 2. And again, I like to factor out the fractions, so I'm going to factor out a 1 6. And I get 12x minus 2x cubed minus 3x squared from negative 2 to the 1. So I get 1 6 times, if I plug 1 in here, I get 12 minus 3 minus 2, or 12 minus 2 minus 3, which is 7. And then if I plug in the negative 2, that would be a bit more work, right? So negative 24, just be careful, minus 2 times negative 8, so plus 16, and then minus 3 times 4, so minus 12. Um, so that will equal 1 6 times 7. This will be then, what is it, negative 36 plus 16, so that would be negative uh, 20. Um, so I'll have uh, 7 minus negative 20, so 7 plus 20. And then that'll be equal to 27, 6, which will be, if divide top and bottom by 3, 9 halves. So a little bit of integral practice for fun. Okay, let's look at another one. So example four, I have f of x equals 3x cubed minus x squared minus 10x. And then I have g of x equaling negative x squared plus 2x. And I want to find the area between, that's uh, captured in between these two curves. Um, this guy is a little bit more complicated than the one before. This cubic uh, in particular, I'll have to look a little closer at this. So I'm just going to get the intercepts of this thing. I know its form from the leading coefficient and its degree will be this. Okay. So it'll go uh, from negative infinity to, and then do some business and then go out to positive infinity. Okay, so I'm going to get the intercepts, the x-intercepts. I let y equal 0. So 0 equals 3x cubed minus x squared minus 10x. Factor out the x. So 0 is x times 3x squared minus x minus 10. Hope I can factor that. Um, 3x and then x and then uh, what, do, what do we need? I guess 5 and 2 maybe. So 5 and 2 and what the bigger one to be negative so negative and positive and uh, so I'll have um, x equaling 0. 3x plus 5 is 0 means x equals negative 5 thirds and then x equals 2. Um, for this other character, if I want the x-intercepts, again, set y equal to 0. I know the form is going to be an unhappy face. Right? It's going to look something like that, okay? because it's a negative leading coefficient and it has even degree. Okay? So I'll set it equal to 0, negative x squared plus 2x, and then a factor out an x or negative x if you'd rather, so x minus 2. So my in intersects x is 0, um, x is 2. Okay. So that gives me a lot of information. I'm going to find where they intersect. So set the two basically equal to each other after you do substitution It's the intersections. So I'll have 3x cubed minus x squared minus 10x equals minus x squared plus 2x. I'm going to move this junk over. I get 3x cubed uh, minus, well, negative x squared and x squared will be 0. And then 
um, minus 12x is 0. Factor out a 3x. So I know x squared minus 4 is 0. And then my zeros are x equals 0. And then x equals 2. And then x is negative 2. All right, so x squared minus 4 is 0 gives you x squared is 4. Gives you x equals plus minus root 4. In other words, plus minus 2. Okay, from this I can get a, an okay picture of what I'm dealing with and uh, uh, start to set up my integral. So for the cubic, I know its intersects are at 0 and then negative 5 thirds. So here's 1, 2, um, negative 3 thirds, 4, 5 thirds. Okay. And then at 2, so the thing... Um, kind of looks like this, you know, whatever it's doing. Um, the uh, parabola then is intersecting at 0 and at 2. So it's hitting here and it's hitting here. And then there are three intersection places. Um, it's going to intersect at negative 2, so down here somewhere. In other words, my, my uh, graph will look something like this. It's butchering it a bit, but it'll look something like that. Okay, so there's an intersection at negative 2, there's an intersection at 0, and there's an intersection at positive 2. Okay, um, ultimately then I need to figure out this area and this area. So it's going to require two different integrals because in this region the graph on top is the cubic and the graph on the bottom is the parabola. In this region the graph on top is the parabola and the graph on the bottom is the cubic. Okay, so let's go at it. I already have my intersection point, so at least that part will be easy. But let's set up the integral, right? So I need an integral for the first region. So for the first region, it's going from negative 2 to 0, and the guy on top is the cubic. And the guy on the bottom is the parabola. Then I need to add in the second part. So I'm going from 0 to 2. The guy on top this time is the parabola. And the guy on the bottom is the cubic. Okay. Yeah. Um, from this point, then, we need to just uh, simplify a lot. So it would be the integral of um, 3x cubed minus x squared plus x squared. Those cancel. Minus 10x minus 2x is minus 12x dx from negative 2 to 0. And then plus the integral of kind of the same thing but with reverse signs, right? So it would be negative x squared plus x squared. Those go away. Then you have a minus 3x cubed and then a positive 12x. So it would be 12x minus 3x cubed dx when all is said and done, and we're integrating from 0 to 2 for that. Okay, I integrate. So power rules all over the place. So I got 3x to the fourth all over 4 minus 12x squared over 2 is just going to be 6x squared from negative 2 to 0 plus um, 12x squared over 2. So the same thing but reversed minus 3x to the fourth all over 4. And then here I'm going from 0 to 2. And then just evaluate, right? So at 0, this thing is 0. So I'll have 0 and then minus this thing evaluated at negative 2. So if I plug that in here, you get 2 times 4, it's 16. 16 divided by 4 is 4. 4 times 3 is 12. Right? So 12 minus 6 times 4 is uh, 24. And then plus, this thing evaluated at 2 is going to give me um, uh, 6 times 4 is 24, minus 3 times, again, 16, but 16 divided by 4 is 4, so 3 times 4 is 12, and then subtract away at evaluate at 0 is just 0. Um, it will just be 2 times this, right? So it would be 24 minus 12 is 12. Um, this will be 12, this will be 12, so 2, plus, 2 times 12 is 24. Okay, um, we can also do integrals of non 
uh, things that are not functions by kind of um, either rotating the axes or, or uh, splitting it up into a bunch of pieces. Okay, so let's take a look at that problem. Um, the book will say, uh, talk about oriented rectangles. So horizontally oriented uh, rectangles. And what they're talking about is the Riemann sum. And we'll, we'll have to kind of reinvestigate the Riemann sum when we start talking about the, the, uh, the volume problem here in the next section. Okay, but for now, um, what is it? We're looking at example five, and we want to find the area between the curves x equals 3 minus y squared and x equals y plus 1. So it's like the y's and the x's are, are changed. If this was x and this was y, this would be no problem. Okay, we could do this problem, but because of the orientation, it causes trouble. Okay, so there's two ways to do it. There's the hard way and the short way. We'll do the hard way first, and then we'll uh, do the short way. So the hard way, you want to change everything into uh, what we've been doing. So put everything in terms of x. So if you do that, um, solving this equation for y, you get x equals 3 minus y squared. So y squared equals 3 minus x. And then um, y is equal to plus or minus radical 3 minus x. And the other guy, x equals y plus 1, that's a little easier to solve. y is just x minus 1. So this um, graph, what the heck is it? Well, it's the square root function. Remember what the square root function looks like this. Okay. And then if you um, shift it over, so you do uh, hose review, horizontal, stretch, shift. So we got to do horizontal shift first of, of plus 3. So move that over 3, 1, 2, 3, and there it is. And then we want to do a reflection about the y-axis. Um, well, actually, we have to do the... It'll look like this at the end of the day. Okay, so let me just cut to the chase and draw it. Okay, so it will effectively rotate it around this, this line. Okay. Okay, so um, anyways, you could always get the graph and get your calculator if you're not as fluent in doing graphs as I am. So anyways, the plus version then is this graph. The minus version of that is just the bottom, this bottom portion. So I can draw like this. And then these guys are two different functions. You know, together it's not a function. It'll fail the vertical line test. Okay, but separately they are functions. Um, then this guy here, x minus 1, so the y-intercept is down here, and then um, the slope up one over one, put me right here, so you get a third line, this guy. So to find the area between the graphs, there's kind of an issue because the graph on the, the bottom versus the top kind of changes, right, in this region. There's two regions you have to do integrals for. There's, there's this stuff over here, and then uh, let me fill. So there's this stuff here in yellow, and then there's this stuff here in green that you have to do separate integrals for, because the stuff in yellow, that integral, um, so for the yellow, the, the, the thing on top is the line. It's the x minus 1, right? So you'd have x minus 1, and then you're subtracting away the thing on the bottom, which is the negative root 3 minus x. Okay, And that'll go from this intersection point to this intersection point, which we haven't even figured out yet. Then for the second integral, the, the curve on the top is actually the plus root 3 minus x part. So this curve on top in this region is that, and then the curve on the bottom is the red curve. Okay, so the curve on the top is the positive root 3 minus x, 
And then the curve on the bottom is the minus root 3 minus x. Okay, so you already see this is quite a headache already. And we haven't even found the intersection points. So we need to still find the intersection points. Um, we can go back here to these equations and set them equal to each other. We get x minus 1 equals uh, root 3 minus x, square both sides, x squared minus 2x plus 1 is 3 minus x, set it equal to 0. We get x squared minus, uh, if I add 1, I get x, subtract 3 minus 2 is 0, so we get x um, minus um, uh, x minus 2 and then x plus 1 is 0. So x is equal to 2, um, x is equal to negative 1 for the intersection points of the line and this thingamajig, right? So at negative 1, it's this point here, and at uh, 2, it's this point here. So on the first integral, I'm going from negative 1 to 2. And then on the second integral, I'm going from 2 to finally 3. Okay, where uh, 3 is just the, the quote-unquote vertex of this sideways-facing parabola. They can find it just by letting um, root 3 minus x equal 0 and then solving. Okay, so that's our big mess of an integral. Um, so we had to split it into two sections because it wasn't really a function. Okay? And really, there are three curves here then. There's the straight line, there's this top curve, and then there's this bottom curve. So the top curve is the root 3 minus x, and then the bottom curve is minus root 3 minus x. So you have to be aware that as soon as you hit this frontier, Right here, you have to change from this minus this to this curve minus this curve. Okay, so yeah, wow. Um, then we, we still have the task of evaluating this integral, which doesn't seem like a lot of fun either. So let's go ahead and do that. So I'll have the integral of x minus 1 plus root 3 minus x dx, and then plus this integral, which is uh, there's one, two of these, and negative, negative is positive, so you have two integral root 3 minus x is dx. You may want to do u subs to figure out these roots. Um, so you may want to let u equal 3 minus x, and then du is negative dx. In other words, dx is negative du for those parts. The other guys, uh, x minus 1, that's just power rules, so you'll have x squared minus x plus the integral of square root of u, which we're going to write as u to the 1 half, but then we also have a negative du to worry about, and then plus 2 times basically the same thing. Let's use a different variable, z to the 1 half times negative dz. Okay. All right. So here it'll be x squared minus x um, minus u now to the 3 halves times the reciprocal of 3 halves, 2 thirds. We have to remind ourselves to evaluate all this junk. Plus 2 times uh, z to the 3 halves times 2 thirds. And of course, there's a negative floating about, so it would be negative actually. And I have to remind myself to evaluate. Um, so this will be x squared minus x minus two-thirds times three minus x to the three-halves evaluated from negative one to two, and then minus four-thirds times three minus x to the three-halves evaluated from uh, two to the three. Okay, so let's uh, go at it now. Um, hopefully this won't be so painful. Plugging in 2, I'll have 4 minus 2 minus 2 thirds times 3 minus 2 is just 1. 1 to any power is just 1. And then minus the same thing evaluated at negative 1. So I'll have 1 minus uh, negative 1, so 1 plus 1, minus 2 thirds 
times 4 to the now the 3 halves, I'll have to think about that, minus 4 thirds times um, this junk. I'm using a weird parenthesis to indicate I have a bunch of stuff going on. So 3 minus 3, well, that one's easy. That's just 0 to the 3 halves, which is 0. And then minus 3 minus 2, oh, that's 1. That's easy. 1 to the 3 halves, oh, that turned out to be a lot easier than I thought. Okay. Um, here we go. 4 minus 2 is 2, minus 2 thirds, minus uh, 1 plus 1 is 2, minus 2 thirds times 4 to the 3 halves. 4 to the 1 half is 2, and then 2 cubed is 8 um, minus 4 thirds times negative 1. So I get, um, uh, what, so I need a common denominator of 3 uh, for this malarkey business. 6 thirds minus 2 thirds minus another 6 thirds plus uh, 16 thirds plus 4 thirds um, is, so 6 minus 6 is 0, then 16 minus 2 is 14, plus 4 is 8, which makes me think I made a mistake. Um, don't tell me I made a mistake. Let me try that again. Um, 16 minus 2 is 14. Jeez. 16 thirds, 6 thirds, 6 thirds. Crap. Give me one second. I see it. So it was way back here. When I integrated, I forgot to divide by 2. I squared over 2. Over 2. So this will be over 2. This will be over 2. And then this is all screwed up. So anyways, uh, I'll have 2 minus 2, which is 0. And then I got minus 2 thirds. Minus um, 1 half plus 1 is 3 halves. Minus uh, Two thirds times eight, of course, is, is going to be sixteen thirds, and then uh, plus four thirds. Sorry about that. Um, equals. I need a common denominator of six, apparently. So negative four six minus uh, nine six plus thirty two six plus uh, eight six equals negative 13, 6 plus 32, 6 plus 8, 6 is 46, um, which again seems wrong. <laughs> 27, no, it's right. 27, 6, which equals, but divide top and bottom by 3, 9 halves. Yay. All right, so they all rejoiced. Um, right, so I, th I think the main bullet point to take away from this is that this is the way you don't want to do it, right? You do not want to have to uh, go through and create these extra integrals to deal with um, the problem. What you want to do instead is integrate with respect to y. So instead of, in your Riemann sum, adding up a bunch of little little rectangles like this, so I add up in a these rectangles from here to here, you want to add up rectangles that are horizontally located, okay, like this. And that's what they mean by horizontally oriented rectangles. They're talking about the Riemann sum. Okay, so in this orientation, if you look at it like this, and the way we're collecting the rectangles is in this direction, right, the guy is scooping them all up in this direction, the top curve is just the, uh, 3 minus y squared, and then the bottom curve will just be the y plus 1 curve. And you could do a, an integral just like we did in the beginning of class. So let's take a look at that section, that, that second sort of perspective. 
integrating with respect to y, okay, with respect to y. So again, we have uh, given um, x equals 3 minus y squared, and then x equals y plus 1. Um, the picture is this, 2, 3, and then we go through these points here. Okay. You want to know the area between the two curves, and what I'm saying is to kind of just change the orientation, and you have to kind of remind yourself you're not going in this direction anymore. Um, the negatives are over here. This is the negative side of the y-axis. So when you think about integrating, you're thinking about running in this direction. Okay? So in particular, then, um, the top curve in this orientation will be the 3 minus y squared. It's this, the parabola part. And then the bottom curve will be the line, y plus 1. To get the intersection points, just set the equations equal to each other. So 3 minus y squared equals y plus 1. And then move the y squared to the other side. So y squared plus y minus 2 is equal to 0. So y plus 2 times y minus 1 is equal to 0. And uh, so at the end of the day, the intersection points were going from negative 2 to positive 1. And then the, the integration is a lot easier. Let's simplify the integral, the integrand first. So I have 3 minus y squared minus y minus 1. And then that will equal the integral of, well, 3 minus 1 is 2. So I have 2 minus y minus y squared dy. And then that's equal to 2y minus y squared all over 2. Don't forget this time. y cubed all over 3 evaluated from negative 2 to 1. I like to factor out my fraction, so I have a fraction of 1 6 times 12y minus uh, 3y squared minus 2y cubed, again from negative 2 to 1. And then evaluate, right? So I have 1 6 times, if I plug in 1, I have 12 minus 3 minus 2. And then minus, plug in negative 2, negative 24 minus 3 times 4 is 12. And then plus 2 times 8 is 16. That'll be 1 6 times 12 minus 3 minus 2 is 7. Uh, negative 24 minus 12 is negative 36. Plus 12 is 20, negative 20, so that'll be plus 20. And of course, that'll be 27, 6, which of course is 9 halves, just like we got before. So the, the moral of the story is to just re-envision this as accumulating rectangles in this direction as opposed to going in this direction. Okay. I think that'll do it for this section. Um, we'll pick up with 7-2 um, next time. Thank you for watching. Bye.